This segment is brought to you by Hoosier Hanks East. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this Tuesday. Of course, coming to you from the Hall Studios. Joined now by our good friend Mike DeCourcy from the Sporting News. Mike, uh, is, we, I, I got to deal with a bye week for uh, Indiana football this week. And first of all, let me just say it was glorious. It was <laughs> awesome. Uh, because I did not have to uh, work on a Saturday uh, and I loved it. But I also I got to watch a lot of football. That was the, the, the my favorite. I mean, I. From game day and uh, Fox on uh, through about one in the morning until I fell asleep, I think. Um, but and there were some really good games, and of course it starts with uh, Ohio State and Oregon, which Oregon had not played, had not sold me yet. Uh, but okay, now they have. They beat Ohio. They slayed the dragon. I still think Ohio State's the best team in the Big Ten. I, I think that they just screwed up with the time management. Um, but, uh, it's, it, they, they won. So to the victor go the spoils. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm not sure that they, that I, 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 I looked at that and I thought, okay, so how, how could they have managed the time differently? And I thought it was a really smart move by Oregon, uh, to take the, uh, purposeful penalty, uh, the, uh, intentional penalty well, man on the field yeah all man on the field that was a smart play because it ate up time and it, it if, if there's if there's any penalty you want to take it's like okay put too many guys out there so they can't do anything it's a really smart play that they made uh i think that the college football is going to have to figure out whether there's some way to address that uh dan lanning did a really smart thing there and it worked out uh, they had it. They only had one timeout. Could they have spent it? I, I think sometimes uh, coaches are a little bit too protective of that final timeout because the seconds matter more because there are ways to stop the clock beyond the timeout. And you're not always going to get to all of them, but you can't create more seconds. Those are they are finite. And Unless I thought, you're in the Russian Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> <Basketball>. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yes, I remember that well. Uh, 1972. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure they managed it that badly. I, they made some mistakes along the way. Certainly the onside kick was was one that was a significant issue. They were not ready for that. And they were not ready for the nature of that onside kick. I was really surprised Todd Blackledge didn't think that was purposeful. The, the blasting the kick at a particular defender. Uh, I, I, it was obviously genius from the moment it happened. And it, 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 it certainly wasn't fail safe, but in that circumstance, one of the reasons why that's a brilliant play is because you know they're not expecting it, A. And if right. you miss him, then it just becomes basically a squib, squib kick. So yep. that's fine. It's from the 50-yard line, that squib kick is going to wind up at the 20, and then you just have to make sure you cover it. So it was a brilliant play. And Absolutely. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't understand the, uh, the, uh, the consternation he had in that moment that it wasn't purposeful. It, it was not only purposeful, it was genius. I mean, Lanning made two really brilliant plays in that and Ohio state defensively, they sometimes get a little vanilla and this goes back a long way uh, because they know they got better guys than most of the teams that they play against. And they were vanilla again in this game, a little bit too predictable. And, and they weren't able to hold up uh, as well as they wanted to to what Oregon was bringing. And it, it cost them. Now, it, what, one of the interesting things about this college football season, Jim, is that th that game was a fabulous game. And then there are the traditionalists, shall we call them, who are trying to present that, well, it didn't matter because they'll both get in the playoff and blah, blah. You think it didn't matter to Oregon? Come on. I mean, sure. what, what are we watching here? Like this this yeah. mentality has got to go. It was what held college football back for a hundred years. And now you see what the result is. I went to a game on Saturday in Pittsburgh. Pitt played Cal. Uh, and now look, we don't know that Pitt's going to win the ACC, but we know that in order to do that, they had to win on Saturday. 
And it was a tremendous, beautiful day for college football. Uh, it was not a brilliantly played game, but it was highly suspenseful. And it was it, it, it all feeds into if, if Pitt wins that game and they continue to win, they'll have a shot at winning the ACC. And if they have a shot at winning the ACC, they don't go to the Peach Bowl so that their starting quarterback, Kenny Pickett, can sit out. No, they go to the playoff and play a real game and, and have a chance at a national championship. That's what this is all about. That's why Saturday, that's why Saturday is probably the biggest game in Indiana football history. Not maybe not the biggest game they'll ever play, uh, because after that you got Michigan and after that you got Ohio State. But it's the I think if you can say that it's the biggest game in Ohio in, in Indiana football history. Because I in it, the door is the door stays open. And that door is to something that they never imagined that they could enter. Yeah, because I before you joined us, I was talking about the fact that in no way, shape, or form does the college football playoff committee want to see an eleven and one Indiana football team. Uh, because more than likely, I think Oregon now can can either run the table with their schedule or at worst go eleven and one. Ohio State eleven and one at worst probably with potentially a loss to Penn State. I don't know because that's at Penn State. Penn State, uh same difference. They're in that same boat, 12 and 0, 11 and 1. Um and because of I don't know that I don't have the tiebreakers memorized, but if Ohio State were to lose to both Oregon and Penn State and in 11 and Indiana went 11 and 1 with a loss to Ohio State uh, how does that work? Uh, well, so, I mean, uh, first of all, as far as I know, uh, the Big Ten championship game will be played between number one and number two. There are no divisions right. now. Okay, right, so right. Ohio State would be out in that in that equation because right. they would have lost two games. So now you still right. have Oregon, and then you have Indiana, Penn State. Presumably, under your scenario, uh, Indiana. I mean, Penn State has beaten Ohio State. And we don't know whether they'd stay undefeated. I, I don't know the schedule. Does Penn State play Oregon? Do they have no, a game? I, not to, I do not think so. And I'm also on the premise that even if you're an 11 and one team, if you're in the Big Ten championship game and you lose, you're still that's a pass. That's not a. I don't know that that counts against you, and I don't think that it should. I'm like, hey, this is kind of a, a different deal. So I, I don't count that as a second loss, just like Ohio. Right. Say if Ohio State had a second loss going into it. Well, um, I'm just under your scenario, though. You've already given Ohio State two losses, so, right? Right. Yeah. Just in case that's the the case, I'm right, just right. because we know that they want Ohio State in that in that playoff, right? So if if Ohio State were to lose that game at Penn State, Penn State would then have Washington, Purdue, Minnesota, and Maryland, and three and the. I, surprisingly, three of those are in, a, are in a row or on the road. The Purdue game is up in West Lafayette, then Minnesota and Minneapolis. Oh, I'm sorry. Then the Maryland game is in College Park. Uh, is, is in State College, excuse me. So, uh, so two of those are home. Two of those are on the road. None of them are against great opponents. Um, maybe uh, Minnesota could beat you, uh, certainly. Um, but uh, it, probably then you're looking at Oregon and Penn State in your scenario as the Big Ten championship contenders, the two that would play in Indianapolis, and then and then Ohio State would be sitting there with two losses, but Indiana in your scenario would be sitting there with one. I, I think they all make it. I mean, I, 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 we, it's way ahead to be talking about that, but I think oh, they all course. make it. One of the reasons why I, 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 I believe that is that in preparing last week for an article that I wrote about that meeting that they had in Nashville last week, the SEC and the Big Ten administrators had in Nashville, uh, I wrote about how I don't care what they do with the, the college football playoff payouts. If the SEC and Big Ten, and they already have uh, said basically that they're going to get 60% of the money. If they wanted to say even more, I don't, it, whatever, you know, but don't mess with the product. Don't create automatic bids for the SEC and the Big Ten beyond the championships bid. And the one of the reasons why I don't want them to do that is be, the main reason is because it destroys the integrity of the championship playoff. It, it this What we have now is exactly what you want to have, a championship playoff with 
to find automatic automatic qualification for the champions. That's what you should have. And then everybody else should be put in the same boat. However, in that boat, Jim, you're basically looking at in most years, three to five, uh, three to five total bids for the SEC in the Big Ten. Um, you're not going to get five in both, but there have been years. I went back all 10 years using current membership uh, and said, okay, if we had these rules and you looked at the final college football playoff rankings, how many teams would each league get? And it averages out to four per year. Every, every year, some years three, some years five, most years four, but it averages out to that. So you don't need to say, uh, you know, you don't need to carve it into a tablet. We're getting four, they're getting four. You don't have to because you're going to get them anyway. You're going to earn them because those are the teams you're putting on the field. And this year, if your scenario were to develop, I believe that all four would make it. The, there's there there are the SEC is struggling in some ways. I mean, Texas has been brilliant, but the SEC has been struggling to find the other three or identify the other three. I mean, Georgia almost lost to Mississippi State the other night. I mean, they didn't almost lose, but they played terribly. Yeah. Uh, so we don't know how good they are. Uh, I, I think in the end, I think that's really going to that's going to help establish this playoff. And I, I was pleased to hear Greg Sankey in particular, who I, you know, I, I do wonder about him in regards to that grabbing the auto bids. I was pleased to see him say that they wanted to see how this played out because watch it play out, watch what it's done to this season and how everybody was hanging on the end of that Penn state SC game and how everybody was hanging on to the end of that Oregon, uh, Ohio state game and how everybody was hanging on to the end of Georgia, Alabama, because all these games matter. Now there were so many seasons, Jim, where, Indiana, Nebraska comes to Indiana and everybody yawns because they know that Indiana is not going to probably win all 12 games. And they know that at the end of the day that in, now that we're going to the old scenario that Indiana at best finishes second in the East to Ohio State and Ohio State goes to Indianapolis to play who would be now, I guess it'd be Nebraska. Uh, and then Ohio State rolls through, and then they go to the playoff, and everybody else just goes to some silly ball game. Now Indiana's actually playing for a chance to to play for a championship. That game, that's why Saturday's game is so immense in ways that it could never have been before, even if it was exciting and fun and all that, and a great football Saturday in Bloomington, it never carried the consequence that it carries this weekend. And that's why they need to to stick with this format. Now, if they want to go to 14, have at it. If you think that's the way you want to go, if you think it'll help you make more money, get more teams, whatever. That's I can live with that because because the real number should always have been 16 anyway. Uh, so if they want to go to 14, fine. But don't change the auto bid process because you're going to get plenty of bids anyway. Yeah, I agree with you and uh, wholeheartedly and let it just play itself out. Uh, because if you're, if, then teams may be just shooting. Oh, if we do this, if we can just do this, we'll get that lower end. And right now, everyone's fighting for the top to be the best because right. that's all that there is. So yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And I think that the Big Ten can get four in. I, I just know that um, Indiana's not uh, on everyone's favorite list just because they're not a traditional power. They don't bring that traditional steam with it, like, uh, you know, Ohio State, Penn State, USC, et cetera. He, but, and speaking of which, what was a bigger win, Penn State at USC or Oregon over Ohio State? I think it was bigger for Penn State to win that game because Penn State has Ohio State coming up. Uh, and and if they lost that SC game, then they'd be looking at the possibility of two losses. And it, I'm not saying no one will get in with two losses, but the two loss team, if there is one that gets in, will be the it's one that's hanging you. by the fingernails on Selection Sunday. Uh, and so I, you know, I think that uh, that it was bigger. It was huge for Oregon because they now are in the, you know, they're in the, they're the main team. 
to try to make the championship, uh, the Big Ten championship, in their first year. And they looked terrific in a lot of ways on Saturday night. Uh, they not not in the spitting incident. That was not a good look. Uh, oh. But Dylan Gabriel was terrific. Uh, they were their receivers were hard to cover. Their offensive line did a great job uh, controlling the Ohio State pass rush, and the coach was really on top of things uh, with with at least two uh, significant contributions strategically uh, to the to the victory. I don't. I mean, like game decisions. Obviously, they made you know, great decisions in terms of building up their game plan, et cetera. But those two strategic decisions uh, were decisive in a game that went down to the final seconds. And how about the games we get? These are regular season games now that we're going to get from now on. Uh, Michigan, whether it's Michigan, uh, USC, or and now, in, you know, teams like Indiana and Illinois who are rising up. Illinois is a Nebraska. Um, just teams that Nebraska has is, is been like IU basketball, a, a, a traditional power that had just been percolating under the surface uh, to rise back up again. And under Matt Rule, they're doing a really good job of that. But I have loved college football as it continues to morph from the transfer portal area. And I know that an NIL probably as well. But there is a very leveling factor to this, man. There's no way that Vanderbilt beats Alabama and follows it with a road win at Kentucky who went to Ole Miss and beat Lane Kiffin. I might like, get the hell out of here. That does not happen. And it is happening. And, and I love it. My friend Pat Forty did a terrific article about the Ohio State Oregon game and why it was still consequential and, and sort of putting, pushing back against the, the, that old guard mentality that, Every game mattered before, even though every game didn't matter before. Uh, oh, if you lost that game, it was so it was so devastating. It was so consequential, and you had no way back and all that. First of all, that was a lie, Jim, because every time Alabama lost a regular season game, they still found a way to put them in the playoff because they were Alabama. So it, it was nonsense. Uh, and second of all, every game matters now because the, the road is open to you. If you're Penn State and you go to Southern Cal and you get that win, and yeah, you still have to play Ohio State. But even if you take that, even if you take an L in that game, you still get a chance to play in meaningful games in December slash January. Whereas before, you were going to play in a bowl game, and it was just it was. And, and as I mentioned before, with Kenny Pickett and Pitt, Pitt won its first ever ACC championship and played in a relatively meaningless Peach Bowl game against Michigan State, and so Kenny Pickett sits out. He's their starting quarterback on their first ever ACC champion, and he sits out. Cincinnati, when I lived in Cincinnati in 2009, put together an undefeated season. They were one second away. If if uh, a pass by Colt McCoy, I think it was, had fallen out of bounds one second earlier, Texas would not have been able to kick a winning field goal against Nebraska uh, in their championship game in the Big 12. And Cincinnati might have gone to the college football playoff that year. Uh, so what happens when they don't end up in the college football playoff? Their coach leaves. Doesn't matter. They're undefeated. Who cares? It's just a meaningless bowl game against Florida. Who cares? Uh, Brian Kelly just walks away. How can you tell me every game mattered when the coaches and the players didn't even play? I, I they, they didn't even stay involved. It, 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 people blame the players for sitting out bowl games. But coaches have been doing it for 30 years because they got to get their next job and get recruiting. And that's how much the Bulls meant. That yeah, doesn't that... happen now. Nobody is walking away from a playoff game because they get a great coaching offer. They're staying and coaching in that. And they're saying, look, if you want me, I might be interested, but I'm coaching my team in the championship playoff. I'm not walking away from this to start recruiting for your school. Mike DeCourcy from the Sporting News with us right now. We've got more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio, and we'll talk about some uh, Big Ten basketball, a little bit more on Big Ten football, though, uh, as well. And uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, losing last night with the Jets, although it was a good game. Uh, the Bills and Josh Allen continue to win. We're back with more Indiana Sports Beat Radio coming to you from the Hard Truth Studios, brought to you by the great folks at Hard Truth Distilling Company and Hoosier Hanks, where this Thursday night, 
You can catch Inside Indiana pass, or football rather with Kurt Signetti and Don Fisher. Make sure you stop by. That's at 7.05. Back right after this. This segment is brought to you by Hoosier Hanks East. <laughs> 